Hello, and thank you for joining me. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about the American Library Association. I'm going to try to help you understand what it is and how you could take advantage of it, um, as well as the they're coming to, to town in uh, late June, and let's try to get you in and enjoy it. You don't even have to sign up to enjoy it. I'm going to give you some uh, hints on that. Um, I'm going to be talking about the American Library Association, but in short, it's called ALA, and I'll probably be using ALA for the rest of the time. One of the, they had a campaign a couple of years ago called I Love Libraries, and libraries are great. We all like them, um, but they are the places, right? The sources and the spaces in which uh, uh, people go to. However, Library workers are truly the, the heart of it. We, we are the place where people come to us to help them um, to seek, even if you're cataloging, they, the, your cataloging helps them seek. It, in IT, you help them create knowledge and art. So I like to say a uh, variations of libraries may be the heart of a university, but library workers are the pulse. So I want to thank every one of you for being a library worker. And, and even if you're, you know, if you're new to libraries, that's great. Thank you for coming here. But for those people who have been there, that's great. And one of the things I would like you to do is at this point, Derek, I'd like you to put in um, my slide link to the chat. This, this link will, uh, all of my slides are full of links. And if you wanna follow along and go down a couple of rabbit holes that you can uh, pull up that link. Also the comments and suggestions, Derek's gonna put in a very long URL and that's a jam board that we're gonna revisit at the end. But as we're going forward through here, I want you, if you have comments, suggestions, reflections, you know, about ALA or what we're talking about, please use that Jamboard because when we come to it to the end, it'd be nice that it would have more populations and we could discuss what you're finding out there. Notice that uh, we do have the Zoom chat. We've all been on Zoom for many years now. So, but just to realize that there's comments and chats down there. I'm gonna be stopping in the middle uh, of the presentation to look at the chat board. And, but Derek said he's gonna be monitoring chats, chat. So if he th feels like he needs to break in and, <coughs> excuse me, make a comment about uh, what we're doing here, uh, he, he, he has that freedom to be able to come in, but I'll be looking at chats later on or in the middle and then towards the end. Um, I also want to let you know I'm recording this in anticipation of sharing this recording with people outside of WRLC. So let me explain what WRLC is. It's the Washington Regional um, or Research Library Consortium, which is made up of academic libraries uh, in the DC area. So this is very academic focused um, in DC specific. So we're not gonna be talking about how to get to conference because we all know how to get to DC. My name is Jennifer Bocher, by the way. Um, I am the business reference librarian at Georgetown University. So that's, you know, that's my framing, that's who I am. I've been a librarian for a, and a member of ALA for over 30 years. So excuse me if I, it, it's, if I talk around a subject, if it's not clear, please put it in the chat or add it to the comments. Because, you know, when you're a carpenter, you don't tell people how to nail a hammer or a ha hammer or nail. Today, we're going to be having uh, six uh, sections, um, and those will become obvious as we go forward. But Sligo says I should probably have a table of contents slide there. First part is about what is the American Library Association or ALA. Basically, it's the professional home for people who work in libraries. And I'm not saying librarians, I'm saying all library workers. ALA is for all 
library workers, not just librarians. Um, they are based in Chicago, which means they're not East Coast, West Coast. And I think that central location does uh, say an awful lot about what ALA tries to do. It brings uh, people there. And also because it is based in Chicago, a lot of the conferences are actually go to Chicago. So that's it. It is membership driven and designed for members of uh, ALA, but there is a very big support staff there to, uh, to support just not what the membership needs, but also the field of librarianship. Um, they are made up of many different uh, divisions and things like that. And I'm gonna be talking about that later on, but basically ALA, if you want to know, is there a standard or is there a guideline about, you know, ILL or anything like that or doing reference and medical reference and what can we do and not, those are standards and guidelines. Um, they have a system called Connect, which is, is, is better, not as good as the listservs, but um, it is there for us to use. They also divide, decide uh, or provide guidance in library policies, you know, should we allow guns or should there be monitoring of, of our patrons coming, you know, and using the libraries, things like that. Policies and ethics, um, the, and, and then awards, conferences, webinars. All of this is explained in the handbook of organizations. So wherever you see that blue link, that blue link will bring you to an, the handbook of organizations with, for ALA. And, and, and this is a very much crimped uh, or, or inspired by, let's cite our sources, inspired by um, the handbook of organizations. Now, people say there's ALA and then you, you hear about ALA, ALA, but then you hear about ACRL or RUSA or things like that. ALA is predominantly made up of divisions and those divisions are actually other associations. So the Association of College and Research Libraries, ACRL, is a part of ALA. I'm a member of RUSA, the Reference and User Services Association, because I'm a business librarian and we they have sections. Within all of these divisions, there are sections. So if you want to, if you're an IT and you work in, um, in the IT department, you might want to join CORE or a cataloger, you might wanna join core. But if you're working with innovation uh, technology on as a public user thing, then, or a public user uh, feature, then you might, or to learn more about using technology and public services, then you might wanna join RUSA. Within all of these divisions, they have their own structures. They have their own board of directors. They have representatives and some, some of them have chapters. ACRL has a lot of state chapters. Um, and then there's op oh, many opportunities for you to get involved and get a line on your resume or to get involved and, and learn and network through committees. So there's division committees, there's sections, which like business is a section of uh, brass, which is business is a section of RUSA. There's committees within the sections. There's interest groups within these divisions. There's discussion groups. There's sometimes conferences and, and or forums for these associations. And, and divisions are the people who create the standards and guidelines. So once you find yourself in RUSA, there are guidelines and standards that they create as well as having an awards. To full, fully describe this like in RUSA, I'm highlighting Rufus not, RUSA not only because that's where business is, but because WRLC is a sharing and transforming access to resource serve, uh, section, STARS, which is about interlibrary loan, document delivery, remote uh, circulation, shared library facilities. So I, you know, anybody who is here from WRLC, you know, you should be joining RUSA to become a member of the STARS section. All sections are usually free to join once you join the division. Not only are there divisions, right? There's all of those, those, those different divisions and the sections within there, but outside of the division network, there is the round tables. And these round tables, 
have their own membership and they have different features. Now, if you're new to uh, ALA, um, the place that usually most people get started if you don't have a focus for your career is the new members round table. They are designed to help people who are new members of ALA. Um, you can be, you know, you can be a new member of ALA, but not, not a new uh, a library worker of 20 years, you know, where do you go? If you are a staff member, there are staff organizations like this sort, the staff organization roundtable. If you're uh, if uh, if you're a ally of the GPLD, T community is a Rainbow Commission um, or Rainbow. I'm sorry, roundtable. Um, I'm a member of Godort, um, the Government Documents Library, because I'm a big supporter of of uh, using government information. So there is a home for you. There's a home for you in ALA through a round table, through a section, through a, re, uh, a division, or if you have more of a broader policy view, you could, we could still use you. You don't have to join a division to become a, coordinate, a, a member of ALA. There's a lot of different uh, benefits of joining ALA. Um, one of them is just becoming a part of contributing to the support of what American Library Association does. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. Yes, it career-wise, it's a wonderful because it gives you networking opportunities to meet with other people who are doing similar things to you, with you, as well as those learning opportunities and enhancing your knowledge as, and, and bringing that back to your library. They also give you, as a member, you'll be able to have discounts to uh, the conferences, Learn, Lin, Lib Learn X, which is the new midwinter, and we're not going to be talking about Lib Learn X much at all. There's division conferences. Um, you have to be a member of ALA to get on ALA Connect. Um, but job, by the way, the ALA job list, you do not have to be a member to take full advantage of. And then, of course, as an award, as a member of ALA, you are also eligible for awards. And another thing that I didn't know until I was reading, preparing for this slide, is all the discounts you get as members. Like if you're a member of a, um, ALA, you could actually then join without any extra fees the Library Congress Credit Union. And for us in DC, that that's uh, relevant because if you don't, if you're if you're sick and tired of the big banks and you want to and get better rates and better service, credit unions are usually a good place to go. And there's many other discounts you can have as a member of ALA. But to be a member, you have to join ALA. Um, and, and you have to join ALA also to become, a, to join a division or round table or to sit on a committee, you have to be a link, uh, a member. And so in, like I said, any of those blue links, you'll be able to click and get into. I was asking people at um, Georgetown where I work, you know, what is the biggest confusion, uh, confusion people have about ALA? And someone says, it's like how to get on a committee because committee work is like I said, this is where you network. This is where you get to know your peers. This is where you get to, to you know, generate standards and, and or look at re, award, re, awards and stuff like that. It's a great opportunity to join a committee because you're not just talking about the people in your immediate uh, but, uh, facility, but also internationally as well, you know, nationally and international. Okay, so let's talk about really what is ALA? So we talked about how it's organized, right? With the divisions and the, that there's offices to support it and everything else. ALA's main, uh, according to the constitution is simplified, is it, it provides uh, uh, and promotes library uh, service and, and librarianship. They're basically there to represent libraries and librarians and library workers. I, the, um, librarianship, uh, to tell you the truth, it has been very librarian centric for a long, long time. And uh, this year, in the last couple of years, they, they really are making an effort to say library workers are professionals. You've, some of you have been doing this same job for 30, 20 years and that we really respect you and we wish you to become members. And actually there's a lot going on in ALA 
so that all library workers can be a member of ALA. There are eight major actions that they do that, that hopefully some of these will resonate with you. They're the advocacy for uh, libraries and the profession. Um, they want to educate and they want every member to be a lifelong learner. They, they are very concerned about diversity. Uh, just actually very a uh, couple of years ago, they admitted that American libraries and librarians in the past have created um, a good deal of being a part of that racial uh, injustice and, and they recognize that and they want to be able to say no longer. And if you see it in ALA or in your libraries, if you see anything that is uh, making you discomfort, please, please bring it to ALA's uh, attention um, or your workplace. And uh, that it, it is a, a concern. And we know there's some legacy of racism in the field. And we're doing everything we can to uh, try to address that. Um, ALA is also wanting to be organizationally excellent. Um, they want to manage their money well. Um, they also are concerned about equitable access to information and library services, and that may mean broadband. It could mean uh, lowering the cost of some of the services, things like that. Intellectual freedom has been in the news. All the banned book news and everything else, the ALA has really stepped into that breach and is trying to promote um, intellectual freedom um, as well as access and literacy. <laughs> Let's face it, if people couldn't read, they shouldn't be, I mean, that, you know, libraries would not really have a big role in, in society. But the other thing that's actually kind of new to ALA is also transforming libraries and making them innovative. So that's one of the things that ALA, those are some of the things that ALA are actively uh, going for. There's also core value statements. I'm not going to go into here. You could read them, but they're, it's basically where it, those core values covered a lot of that what we need to do. Now, they also have a strategic plan that was introduced last year. And this is a big, big slide, but the big thing is that they talk, you know, they want to increase broadband. They want to bring equity, uh, diversity and inclusion for all library workers um, and, and, you know, revenue streams and all those other good things that strategic plans usually mention. I'm not going to go long on this slide. Just I'm just putting it in there. If you want to know about the governing documents um, and priorities, or or the uh, ma uh, policy manual, which is talking about operating the library, but also the policies that library take, that this is all links that are really great things to do. Um, let's talk about how ALA works, um, and then after this, I'll be pausing for questions. We've talked about the structure. We talked about the motivation. We talked about how wonderful it is, but how does it really work? ALA is membership driven. And a couple of members right there um, that you may know. Uh, so just be aware that it is membership driven. You have to be a member to be able to make ALA work. And we appreciate that. They, they uh, because of, of like I said, the, the reduced rates for support staff and libraries are now brought it down to $54. Before you had to join, you had to join at the librarian rate, but now for uh, uh, support staff. And also we recognize that there are some librarians that don't make a lot of money. Um, those are usually in public libraries um, uh, that they don't make that much money. And so they also have a reduced rate for that. Um, and then librarians, if it's the first year that you're joining ALA, then $75. But after, I think it's something like four years, it's going to be 150. So there's money that I know, uh, some institutions, some libraries do pay for membership in ALA. Um, I know Georgetown doesn't, so it is, it is a commitment you have to make, but check to see with your employers. And then there's also an organizational rate that I'm not going to go too far into it because uh, if you're interested, contact me or, or actually ALA membership. By the way, if you become a member and you pay your dues for 25 years, once you retire from your position, actually the way the, 
dues to become a member of ALA is waived and you don't have to pay for it anymore. Um, there is, okay, so you have to become a member of ALA before you become a member of one of these divisions. So here's the prices for the divisions. Prices are on top of the ALA price. Hopefully that's clear. And if you're a student, oh God, we love you. Um, we want you to come into the profession. We want you to become a member. So we give you the reduced rate, um, yes. And then actually some of that, uh, re, uh, the, the membership, we love you so much. Some uh, of divisions will actually, if you join the division, they will waive the ALA due as long as you're a student. And that's, you can be a student member for five years. Even after you graduate the third year, the next two years, you can still classify as a student. I, I believe that's true. ALA is made up of it's governed because it is a membership organization. There is um, a council that of 150 librarians that is the policy making, the operation and things like that. We meet uh, usually twice a year and, and go forward. I am a counselor. Um, I was not reelected this past year, but maybe next year I'll run. Um, and so the, okay, so we have the council that's kind of the policy making, and then there's the executive board, which meets more frequently. And, and they are kind of like taking care of the media, things that have to be done. And then for the day-to-day -day operation, there's the executive director and the executive director oversees the staff in Chicago. And, uh, and then it's also, there's committees that help of the, the directors and the offices run. There is something called an ALA president. By the way, all of the division leader heads are also called presidents, but the ALA division or the ALA president is uh, annually elected and they represent and they're the, the uh, spokesperson for ALA. So if you really wanna make a change in ALA, uh, reach out to the executive director and reach out to the president. At this uh, this year, it's Patty Wong, and I've never known a ALA president to do anything um, bad. But anyway, um, the the ALA is funded by their members. Thank you very much uh, through ALA memberships, and we just talked about the memberships, but also through their educational events like the conference publishing and donations. So, and, and they're really building much into the donations and getting grants. So it, they're doing what they can. We've talked a little bit about the executive director. We've talked about offices that are there to, uh, in Chicago. And these are the offices and every one of these offices have people there who wanna help members. Um, and we've been hearing a lot from the OE, OIF the Office of Intellectual Freedom. They're the people who are doing the banned books information. Um, the, the Public Policy and Advocacy Office is working with the people uh, in Congress to like get broadbands and, and library mail and, and you know media mail and keeping those policies. But all of these people have, all of these offices have people who are happy to help you. And they usually also have newsletters. So you can subscribe to their newsletters to keep up what's going on out there. Now we've talked about some of the many layers of ALA. There's the divisions and round tables, and then there's the offices that we we're just talking about. So organizationally, you know, are we talking about a division? Or are we talking about an office? And, and there's many things you could do as a member of ALA. You could do the committee work. You could learn more about from e-learning, political action, um, leadership, you know, running for a, a leader of a division, a round table or a committee, um, and then just keeping up with the profession. We're gonna be going in a little bit into the conferences and the conference, when you go to the conference, there's really three things that, you know, where do I wanna focus? The exhibit hall, the discussion and programs. Do you want to go to uh, committee meetings and learn about what's going on there and networking? So again, somebody asked, how do you join a committee? Well, a committee, it, you have to become a member of ALA. Uh, all committees are open. And so I would recommend that you check them out if you're going to conference or online, uh, check them out. Committees are appointed by the vice or incoming chair 
of whatever level that you're looking at. And usually it's done in the spring that the roster is created in the uh, strength, spring. So find a division or round table that you enjoy going, look, to, look at the, what committees they have. Some committees only take four hours a year, a year. You know, uh, one hour here, one hour there. Uh, sometimes like for council, it could take 20 hours, uh, especially this last year. Um, there's a volunteer form link there and I encourage you to go into it and to learn more about uh, how to get into the volunteer group. And even if you don't, you know, if it's too late for you to join a committee, it doesn't mean you can't participate. It means you could still go on to the connect group and follow what's going on. Or if you go to the conference, go to that committee and see what's going on. You could still work for that committee. You just won't have it on your resume. Uh, so finding more, uh, doing more with ALA, these are links that we've already talked about or uh, information, and there's links here to go into it. If you want to find out more about ALA or if you want um, to, to the, oh, finding more, I don't think uh, other than connect where you have to be a member, um, all of these things are open to you and subscribing to a newsletter, you can subscribe to an office's newsletter um, and I don't think you have to be a member to subscribe. I've been a member for so long. So at this point, I'm going to uh, ask if there's any questions. Um, there's no questions in chat. Those were just the links that were sent out. Um, Actually, Jennifer, I have one question, if it's OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so I, I filled out the volunteer form. When do I? find out if I've been accepted onto a committee. Okay, um, just to let you know, ACRL is very competitive to get on committees. So sometimes it may take a while, but it doesn't mean you can't go to a committee. Usually, uh, but you know, uh, some, some chairs are, you know, it fills up really fast and, and then you'll be informed. Some chairs are just really beating the bush to get committee members going. So usually these committees are usually fixed, hopefully before ALA. So what you might wanna do is go and um, email the chair um, uh, and uh, the chair of that committee and just say, you're just wondering about the status, status of your volunteer. Actually, no, the chair doesn't do, the incoming chair of that section or division or round table um, uh, uh, contact the incoming chair because they're the ones who set it. The chair of the committee sometimes may be staying on or they may have some influence, but they usually don't say, you know, they usually will say, keep this member on. But if it's a new member trying to get on a committee, they probably won't know who you are. But the incoming chair of that section who assigns committees, or if it's a division level, uh, they, they would they would know. So contact that person because also you putting that forward means that you care enough that they'll probably put you on. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Uh, what are some of the tips for making the most of uh, times that conference came in from David? Um, that's our next, uh, what we're going to be doing uh, for the rest of today, uh, the day, um, looking at that. So stay tuned. Sorry for making you sit through the first half. Um, are there other questions? All right. Um, I'm turning off my chat now and we're gonna go forward. By the way, I put links into the slides uh, from in the chat. So if you want to go back to the slides, um, they uh, will be made available to you. You can click on that, click on that now and get to the slides. And then the second link, that big long link, is a reflection board uh, for a jam board. And I encourage you to use that as I am speaking or to use that later on um, with observations, comments, questions, because we're going to be checking in on that later. Conference will be coming to town. Woohoo, the circus is coming to town um, this June. In, in less than a month from now, you have to register to be uh, to come to conference. We've already missed the advanced registration, but this was a great graphic, so I just didn't want to 
mess it up. So the advanced registration is out. That's no longer available to you. Um, but you do have the standard um, registration, which is open until June 20, uh, uh, 21st. If you know at this point you will not be able to make it, you've already registered, you can get a refund of your registration, um, but that expires on the 27th of this month, May. So if, if you say, you know, I registered now, I don't think I can go, um, you have to let them know by Friday <laughs> that you can't make it or, you'll, or your registration fee will be waiver, uh, 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 sacrificed. Um, by the way, when it says other members, those other members are uh, support staff, um, the people making under you know, 45, as well as retirees um, and uh, students. I think students may be waived. You have to go in and look. But notice, I mean, the cost of a non-membership is actually a little bit more than becoming a member of ALA. So this is a way of getting members. The cheapest, by the way, uh, salary or the cheapest way to get in is $95 for exhibits only. But if you wait a little longer, there might be a way of you get in. You have to have a pass to, or you have to register for ALA um, to get to use the, uh, uh, the placement. Usually you don't have to uh, register to go to the placement um, uh, the library's uh, placement center, but uh, because of, well, we'll get into that later. But anyway, the cheapest thing if you, if to get to ALA is the exhibits pass. So uh, $95, see if you're, see if I'm sure your, your workplace will be happy to sacrifice $95. It, that, it means if you do exhibits only, you won't be able to go to any of the special events or any of the, uh, 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 the programming information and educational is just walking the floor. But believe me, that will take you a long time if you do that. First thing you need to do, need to do when you go to conference is check out the scheduler. And we're going to spend a little time in the scheduler uh, to see, is it worth your time? Should you just get an exhibits pass? Um, for those people who believe their workplace may not let them go unless they put out a good argument, there's a link here on how to get uh, people, um, how to make a case for attending. Yes, we saw the, the registration, but there's other additional things called ticketed events. These are usually um, you know, day long workshops or they could be a special dinner or an event that will have an extra cost to it. Sometimes as low as $5, sometimes as much as $45. So those just be aware ticket events is on top of your registration. Um, there's also a link here for people with accessibility. Um, and also they, uh, George, uh, one of the things that ALA is uh, wants to focus in is sustainability. And there's a sustainability pledge there and, and other event things talking about sustainability of the university. One of the biggest advice that so many people do not are not aware of is that there is an ALA app for conferences, which is wonderful because that app uh, will tell you if uh, uh, an event has changed, if it's been canceled or if it's been moved. And so you, you create your schedule in the scheduler and then that app will remind you to go. It'll give you space to put out notes and stuff like that. And one of the nice things that ALA did that I thought would really is really helpful for the uh, Washington DC areas is that there's a line, uh, land acknowledgement um, for the DC area that you could use when, um, you're, when you want to present um, and, and mention the land acknowledgement of how we, uh, whose land this was before we came. Uh, scheduler of joy. Um, I'm going to go into it. This, this, you know, we'll come back to this slide. But the scheduler, um, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a registered member to, or a registered uh, person to get to the scheduler. You can just go into it. Notice the, the scheduler. It tells you day to day what's going on. And there is what, 672 today, there's 672 different events going on. That's an awful lot. 
Um, let's say that you're interested in acquisition. So you say, okay, give me the acquisitions um, and you go in and you see of acquisitions, there's 31 different activities going on. The print, uh, the PAN, the print um, archive uh, uh, network, which um, AC, uh, ARCL or someone. Anyway, um, those are the regional repositories. Notice that there's ticketed events. And then there's also things that anything with the blue is they're saying is an educational event. So uh, just realize that if you're if you if you want to go in by a job for your job, you can go and look at the subjects. If if you say that you can go in and you can go in and say, I want to look at academic things that are for academics only, academic libraries only, you can go into that. Or you say, you know, I'm only interested in authors events. Authors love um, coming into uh, ALA and signing stuff. Uh, so uh, look to see for that. Um, or if you are a division, if you are a division um, member and you wanna say, you know, RUSA, what's going on with RUSA? I can go into my subunit and just go in and type RUSA. Notice we have an awful lot of these acronyms. I am so sorry for that. ALA, American Library Association, loves using these little short things. Now, I wanted to also focus on the scheduler and say way up here in the hamburger, it's called a hamburger because it's bun, meat, bun, um, that in here in the upper right, you could also say, okay, I'm concerned about the governance of, because it's, it's a membership organization, what's going on in governments? Or let's say, I wanna know, okay, I heard about all this stuff going on in the news. What are some of the things that are kind of newsworthy? There's 13 different events that are looking at uh, rural libraries or intellectual freedom or tech trends or values and national campaigns on banned books and, you know, a whole bunch of, of issues that are in the news. And so that's a really nice one to go to. Um, or if you wanna say, I wanna know about the future trends going on in the field. If you wanna know about the trends going on in the field, so president and the chair programs are really good. If there is an author that you wanna meet, um, uh, you can go in, and under marketplace, which we're going to be talking about, uh, is talking about meet the authors. And so if you want to know who are the authors coming and where, when are they going to be there? Because they're not there every day, all the time. You can do that. But if you have a friend who's a speaker and you say, you know, where is my friend speaking at? Um, you could just go in and, and look up uh, her or his name or say, okay, who from my state is going to be speaking? Who in DC is speaking? Interestingly enough, not a single ACR or a WRLC um, person, or at least the D in the DC uh, state is speaking from the WRLC uh, libraries. So I just wanted to point that out as, uh, as using um, the, up here, this hamburger is a really another nice way of getting around um, in here. So let me go back to my slides. And then, so here's kind of what I was talking about. Oh God, we only have five minutes. Okay, um, you will not have time to do it all. These are some hints on what you could do to try to address uh, what's going on. Realize to get around between venues, there's usually a free bus uh, to get from a hotel to a hotel because not everything's gonna be in the convention center. The library marketplace. The library marketplace is basically 550 ex ex exhibitors that are coming, and then the 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 exhibit hall. The marketplace is the exhibit hall, and then there's different areas that will you could go into. Um, if you're new to uh, coming to the exhibit hall, just realize if you are a book reader, then you find a book get from a vendor or somebody else. Usually you could ask them to reserve it and you can pick it up on the last day of the exhibit. Sometimes you can pick it up for free because they do not want to take it home with them. If you cannot come, and since we're in DC, it makes more sense to come than not come, you have the ability to have something called the digital experience. 
And uh, I'm not going to talk into that. Okay, during the conference, I word this has gone fast. Um, like I said, job placement usually it used to usually is free, but because of the COVID and DC, you have to have a badge to get in. So the cheapest way to use the job placement center is pay for the ninety-five cent or ninety-five dollar um, pass. However, if you get some vendors will actually give you an exhibit pass for free. So if you're going to be visiting with a vendor, ask them, do you have any exhibit passes that I could use? But one of the greatest things about uh, coming in the job placement center we talked about, one of the greatest things about is ALA is, um, is reconnecting with old friends and old colleagues and people like that, going to socials and reunions that norm sometimes are not most of the time, they're not actually in the scheduler for those socials and reunions. Um, so just be aware that uh, you don't have to be going and pay for the registry for ALA to catch up with old friends and have dinner. Vendors also will visit with you, even if you can't make it to the exhibit hall. Um, you could still contact that vendor if you have any suggestions or questions or, or anything else like that. The vendors will love to talk to you. A lot of them are going to be in town for ALA. Okay, at this point, we're gonna go to the jam board and let's put that jam board link in again. Um, and so here's the jam board link again and let's let's start and to use a jam board, you just have to go over here to a sticky note and just make your comment and write away. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Students are considered others members. So it's gonna be that reduced rates. Um, and Cody was, uh, that was from Carissa. And then Cody was kind enough to say that um, if you bundle it, oh, I didn't know about the VCALA, um, uh, that you can bundle your, uh, uh, your, what they call chapter members, Virginia Library Associations with your ALA. Um, and it's a good value. So I'm asking people to say, what is your next step? Are you gonna join? Are you a member now? Why not? Um, can people not get in? I thought I made this available for folks. so fast. I asked you, what do you enjoy about working in libraries? No one has a comment. Is there a way to see who's registered, has registered for the conference? Um, yes, kind of. Um, if they make it available, because it's, it's, it's an individual's choice to reveal themselves or not. You can contact uh, ALA conference, and I think that they will give you who has registered. Um, but what's really nice is that uh, uh, to, for registration is is that when you when you register yourself, because you have to register yourself to see, and then you can go in and there's usually a message board, and you can say who's a you know who's also registered. And then you could contact that individually, individual. Um, will meetings typically be recorded for sharing to members? Meetings, no, but uh, you know, there's committee minutes and stuff like that. You can get into those, but programs, anything that's mentioned as a program usually is recorded. Um, uh, but you might have to pay later on to see that recording. Um, and the e-learning uh, platform. Is there a mentorship program available through ALA? The new members roundtable does have a membership uh, or a mentoring uh, program, but usually those mentorships are done through the division or, or the section or a roundtable. So those mentoring isn't through ALA, but in that division uh, roundtable structure. Um, I enjoy helping. Ah, why do you love being a librarian? I, I do too. I enjoy helping people while educating individuals on the different uh, uh, specializations within librarianship. 
Um, I think we all enjoy doing that as well. Thank you. Um, okay, so we are at the point uh, at the end because I'm only given 45 minutes of, of being here. So I wanted to uh, thank everybody who has uh, joined me today. And uh, I, I, do, I am looking for Twitter followers. There's my email links. I'm happy to do this. These slides you can use as long as you give me attribution. Um, I have want to thank uh, uh, Slido for their slides and the templates, which I have to. And for those people who can't use tiny URLs for security reasons, Here's a complete link to the slides. Um, I want again, thank you, Derek and the Committee of Shared uh, uh, Sharing um, and also WRLC for uh, in, uh, taking my suggestion and having this talk. Is there anything else? Um, oh, and Dara, thank you for uh, being the interpreter, sign interpreter and Brandy for doing that. You're welcome. Questions? All right, I guess that's it. I'll talk to you all later. See you. Enjoy LA as a member or at the conference. <laughs>